as we are discussing this. So don't get worried too much about whether we can finish this today or not. We should be able to finish uh, all here today. But even if you don't, uh, uh, it's fine, provided you understand what is being discussed. Today. Okay. So please feel free to ask questions uh, in between. Don't hesitate to ask questions. Anywhere, uh, anytime you feel like, okay, this is I'm talking Greek to me, uh, please, uh, you know, ask ask for clarifications. Uh, and once we are very sure that you know we have understood the basics, and as I said, we are only take only basics. Okay, there is a lot more in the accounting which we are not going to touch. Right? We need to know something which is what uh, we need to work with ERP next. We need to know something very specific, something very basic. That is what we are going to cover. So very important for all of us to understand that. Okay. Uh, before I begin, uh, anything uh, from the last session? Any questions from last session? Any doubts that you had in last session? Was it everything clear? Okay. So uh, I'll just do a quick recap. I'll just go to the slides which we looked at. So we said there are four things. So in that session, we looked at business functions and business processes. And uh, today we look at accounting concepts and financial statements as what we need as a basics of accounting. Uh, business functions, we looked at all of this. And please rec recall that uh, we kind of got clarified about what each of these functions do, what uh, board of directors do, or what, what we call executive management concept do, uh, what do operations guys do, or operations is industry specific. Uh, it could be called the production or manufacturing in manufacturing industry. It would be called as uh, core banking in the banking industry. It calls a software delivery in IT services industry and so on. So operations uh, is a term which is changes as per the industry. In healthcare, it could be the hospital management. <coughs> that is what is called as operations person. Uh, marketing is where uh, people start looking at, uh, you know, developing new products. Uh, or communicating about these products to the to customers as well as to potential customers also includes market research in that sales is a, as an important function because it brings money in the company it brings revenue to the company and it is all about uh, managing customer relationships so that's what we talk about in sales uh, finance we said it controls fund inflow and outflow um, whereas accounting will maintain all records, financial records. Okay. And in ERP, since we are all about actual record keeping in a way, I mean, if you really see ERP system or for the matter any information system, it's all about inputs and uh, input forms and output reports. I mean, very roughly, I would say. Obviously, there's more to it. But very roughly, it takes input, it processes, it takes data as an input, processes the data, and produces some information. That is the basic idea of any information system. So accounting is something which is uh, actually most of the time it's first function that gets uh, automated. So in India, you see uh, many companies don't use ERP, but they use tally. Why? Because <coughs> uh, it's easier to implement uh, tally there because tally is also makes life easier for the accounting people. It's all about recording information and producing reports. So tally or any QuickBooks in the US, for example, has become very popular ones because any company which goes for automation largely goes first with accounting uh, implementation. Even in the large scale uh, companies, when the ERP is uh, implemented and later analyzed to see which department use it fully, I mean, only ERP, nothing else. It's typically accounting department which uses it fully. They do everything in the ERP. Whereas if you see sales or these people will have something else going on along with ERP. But yes, ERP provides a very uh, integrated solution for the for the organization. So then we talk about HR um, uh, or human resources department. We talk about information system as in IT department or MIS department, sometimes it's called. Uh, nowadays it's called digital department. And then there are support functions like purchase, facility management, legal department, investor relations, and so on. Then we we'll look at business process. And I said, uh, when you have different functions, you know, there are something that happens 
across the organization. So there are various functions available. But to make things work, there has to be some set up process, set, set up process, uh, steps that need to be followed. So that is what was the business process. I did not show you this slide, but it essentially shows a definition. It says flow of material information knowledge. So think of an assembly line in a manufacturing company. What is flowing there is a material, right? Uh, so it's some, maybe some doors and steering wheel and all these components. And at the end of the assembly line, you get a car, which is like, which can be driven out, right? So it's a, inf it's a material is flowing, but also a lot of information is flowing, right? I mean, which model of this car is, right? Uh, so same platform, same assembly line is used uh, to make multiple models and obviously multiple variants of the model. So if you're buying, say, uh, uh, say Swift, you know, Swift will also have LX and some different variants of that uh, model. So all these are made on the one single assembly line. So all that information has to flow, right? which is the model, which door should go, whether it should have uh, fog lamps or not. You know, this is like another component. So depending on the model variant, you know, it will decide it. And that information has to flow. And even knowledge for that matter. I mean, you know, <clears throat> uh, people have learned over a bit of time how to manufacture a uh, defect free, you know, a defect free uh, product. And that is where you would see that uh, you will have some knowledge also. Flow. If you think of our own software development life cycle is DLC. You get requirements, uh, then you kind of uh, make requirements, specification document, make some design document, make some coding changes, do some test cases, testing, uh, make some deployment plan, and all that. It's also a process which we follow. And there's a lot of knowledge that is kind of information and knowledge that is going uh, from one step to other step. It's not only material, so to say, uh, except you count paper as a material, even today's world, online world, you really don't need any material that to pass on. But you are basically passing on information and knowledge. Uh, so it is simply say it's a set of activities or steps. And now it could be within a function or across the function. And what we saw last time was across the function, across functional business process, which matters a lot. But even within a function, you have processes like operations as assembly the product. In marketing, you have lead generation process. Leads are basically people who are supposed to buy. So if I'm selling <coughs> chairs, you know, uh, the entire Mumbai area or Pune area is my uh, uh, kind of area in which I can sell. But that doesn't mean every uh, Punekar is going to buy a uh, chair from me. So out of that population of all Punekars, I need to have some people who would be interested in buying uh, chairs. So how do I really do that? That's called lead generation. So that's kind of a thing that, that we need to do in marketing. Then accounting, so creating financial statement also is a set of activities. So that is within accounting. Human resources also have a process called hiring employees, recruitment, which starts with advertisement of uh, or giving a job description, JD, taking the resumes, you know, processing them, shortlisting them, organizing tests for them, interviews for them giving an offer later, you know, and all that, maybe onboarding. So, so is it all of what happens within companies, essentially a business process, a multiple set of business process. But obviously what we are interested in so much so, I'm just admitting people. Uh, what we are interested so much so in the app is this cross-functional business process. And we looked at one, which is order to cash. And I showed that is a very simplistic way of putting an order to cash, depending on the company, the size and the complexity, you would have very complex business process. Uh, but these are typically the order to cash, procure to pay. So someone somewhere needs some material to be procured <coughs> in production or operations function. And then it goes to procurement and then they issue some kind of purchase order. And the material comes in, is received by the production department. And the accounting guys will need to be informed. They will also generate some documentation and they will release the payment. So production, uh, there is one production, then there is a procurement, and then there is this accounting. It's three departments, three functions are involved in procure to pay. Uh, concept to launch is a product development. Again, marketing will take it to account. Operations guys will be involved to figure out what works in there. Uh, 
board of board of rights will be involved right so every of these uh processes would have multiple functions getting involved difference because uh, each function will act like a silo as kind of a something something within something happens hr people are together in a way right but to make company work perfectly well you need to have things going across functions and how do we really track this right how do we really track this for a ceo to track this uh, individually you know just going from one step to other will be too difficult so what is the best way to track this is to have some kind of a system like erp right so erp becomes very important when we talk about cross functional business processes if you talk about individual uh, functional business processes perhaps you can buy products like tally for accounting and that will take care of the process of creating financial statement that will be taken care of it. you may also buy hrm uh, model hrm product actually there are many actually hrm product which are available which will support this say, recruitment process for example right so you could actually buy uh, it's a core banking product which will handle banking internal operations so you could actually buy uh, products which will serve to a particular function and handle all the business processes within the function this business process we like to call it a functional business process but when you need a system which can handle all particularly cross functional business process that is where you will need a erp system which will handle cross functional business process so you can you can't really have uh, two systems together that is uh, erp also and then this model specific or function specific systems when you get into erp you handle the whole thing together right you have one erp system which does everything for the company so that is what the erp is and this is the process that we looked at so this is what we discussed so far uh, i'm just kind of give a recap uh, let me again take a pause here for a minute to see if there are any questions doubt is this i just want some feedback whether it is making sense to you So, Sally is asking, "What is HRM product?" So, uh, HRM stands for Human Resource Management, uh, and uh, a software which will help um, automate business processes within uh, HR function is called HR product. Uh, so, there are not as many as what I mean in accounting. You have tally, which is like very well known. Uh, in HR, there are many small like there are very small companies uh, which provide these HRM products. uh they were very popular earlier maybe 10 years back uh because uh, you know erps were not being considered and many hr people used to work with hrm products uh but nowadays these are really out of fashion i mean just don't do this hrm separate uh but uh, you can still buy i mean there are many small companies who sell this hrm products so those are still there does it answer your question sidi okay so snail is asking uh, can you please one more time explain the difference between finance uh, and accounting function so accounting uh, is a function where we uh, record all financial transactions so you are basically a record keeper in a way. you are kind of maintaining all transactions that are happening so you keep a record of it and make financial statements so that people can see what is happening in the company the financial statements is what we'll discuss now so in a way accounting function is pretty standardized function in a way we just get uh, to record all uh, all all account all financial all business transactions they kind of record finance on other hand is a function which will uh, control the fund inflow and outflow so uh, things like if you have a surplus fund where to invest it so whether to keep it in a bank or in a mutual fund or keep it in cash that kind of decisions are done with the finance if company needs to raise funds um, for some project or for say uh, some um, So to set up a new plant or something, then how to raise that fund? How to if you want to take a loan, then going and interacting in bank to take loans. 
uh, all that fund how to get fund inside the company that is something which is um, looked after by the finance people and when the fund is going out they also will keep track of it in terms of um, so they also are responsible for uh, having budgets uh, why do they do budgeting simply because uh, managers in the company should not just spend money left right as and when they think in the beginning of the year they are required to give an estimate that this is what we think will need money so for example a hr head will give a estimate that typically we have so many people we have to do salaries we need to uh, go to campus so we need to have some budget for that campus equipment we need to have budget for recruitment of uh, people and you know we need some budget for training and so on all that budget has to be given and the finance will kind of look into those budget check whether it is all the departments budget whether it is you know making sense whether they are uh, tallying together you know what the company's ability to generate funds and what it can spend and so on and also track whether you are spending as per the budget or not so if i give a budget that so my department will require maybe 30 lakhs in a year to spend and i spend more than uh, 50 lakhs so that is not acceptable it will not even allow you to do that they will stop you from doing it uh, maybe 10 20 percent variance is okay but anything more than that it will stop doing it so finance is an important function because they are keeping track of all fund flow in in flow or out so that is their function which is very distinct actually from uh, accounting but it's all about money so that's the reason you will see accounting finance go together but the functions per se are pretty pretty much distinct so to say Does it answer your question, Snehan? Yes. Uh, any more questions? Please feel free to ask questions, doubts, on whatever we discussed so far. Okay, so let us go ahead. I'm just admitting one student. Okay. Uh, so, what is accounting? Now we'll get into accounting. We're not so much discuss finance, but accounting is something we need to discuss. So, it's a process okay, by which the financial information about a business is recorded, classified, summarized, interpreted, and communicated. Okay. Large statement. We'll not get on it so much. Just a, a kind of a definition. Uh, but this is something that you would have heard. So, even though you're not an accountant. Uh, I'm sure none of your soccer friends may be accountants or working in the accounting uh, business or accounting function. So this is what they would do. They do, and this is a classical accounting data processing cycle. So they'll collect raw, raw data. They will uh, analyze the transactions to see how that raw data should be uh, recorded. So you analyze those transactions, and then you record those transactions in what is called a journal. So in old days, when there was no computer early, there used to be uh, kind of books, literally notebooks, a big notebook. I don't know if you have seen this kind of A4 size, thick notebooks, and they are called journals and they are called ledgers and all that. So and some of your friends who are working, uh, studying in become bachelor's commerce, they had to study about bookkeeping. So bookkeeping is because you know you need to really keep those books, and. Uh, For la large organizations, for old organizations, I mean those who are running for years, they would really have these documents on paper, and it used to be really thick books kind of a thing. So all these uh, transactions have to be recorded chronologically. Chronologically means as per time. So, आज का record आज, you know, tomorrow's later. If you, you don't do it randomly, just to follow chronological order. So date by date wise, you kind of write it down, and then once you write it down, someone else. Uh, 
who is perhaps more knowledgeable than uh, the person who is just recording, or could be the same person for that matter, uh, would post it to the ledger. So ledger are specific document like account receivables. There are different ledgers uh, which is together, and there are again different set of uh, notebooks in a way. So it will be <coughs> taken out from the. It is there in the journal, but it is kind of put it. Uh, in the ledger, a specific ledger, depending on the you know, what type of transaction it is put in the. So if it is a payment, it will be noted somewhere else. If it is a account receivable, it is noted somewhere else. So different types. We'll discuss the what are the types. But these are ledgers which are posted. These are posted to ledger. Then you need to make a trial balance. You need to kind of now uh, try to make some financial statement. One of the financial statement is a trial balance or the balance sheet. Or, uh, balance sheet. And a balance sheet, I mean, we'll see later, it has to tally. That's where the tally word comes in. It has to tally. It has to be, there are two columns, both should tally. Now, uh, it may not tally to begin with. So you create a trial balance and you see, is it tallying? Mostly it will not because you might have not got all transactions in place. So you need to mix those adjustment entries in accounting. Accounting, entry, one thing that was done in accounting is that you never delete a transaction. Whatever is comes in, you kind of record it. Okay. Uh, if you made a mistake, you make a reverse entry and nullify uh, that transaction. Which simply don't delete it. Okay. So you need to do all these adjustment entries per se, and then finally make a preparation of financial account. So earlier, when there were no computers, people used to have a kind of army of people doing this kind of work, and hence there used to be a lot of people who with become qualifications are employed. By companies because this is a, a big task in itself right? to kind of uh, collect collect raw data, put these transactions and all. Tally help to uh, in India at least tally or QuickBooks in US for example help to uh, simplify this to a larger extent. So uh, once you put it in the journal and the right thing, most of this could be done automatically. You don't need to really do it so much manually. So. Uh, so the process uh, remains there. Uh, uh, you know, you don't need to spend as much time and as many people's time on it. So today you will see many companies have kind of reduced staff, which is required for accounting because now most of it is automated. Most of it is done by the software person. The same thing obviously applies within ERP also. So this is a kind of a processing cycle. So it's basically all data. I mean, it's all data. So it's a very uh, good candidate for um, for automation in a way because it's it can be done by the system much faster person what would happen in ERP as against say tally kind of a thing uh, uh, in tally if you are kind of making a sales or a purchase you need to make an entry an accounting guy has to make an entry that you know sales has happened so sales people have to inform accounting guys was we are but this this is the details please make pass the correct accounting uh, transaction so that is what the accounting guys will do. When we are using ERP, what happens? Sales guys will make a entry, right? Uh, will actually create a sales order. The system will create the entries in the accounting model. Right? Please give attention to this particular statement. What happens uh, in ERP is that the business users, say they are sales guys in our case, or they could be purchase guys, uh, or say manufacturing guys, right? They will make entries for their requirement, like they create a purchase order, they create a sales order, or something like that. And accordingly, the system, the software will make the accounting entries. So you don't need someone to really make the accounting entries separately. When somebody has created a sales order, uh, the corresponding accounting entries are made by the software itself. Okay. So you are eliminating the need of a person to do that work. Number one. And you also eliminate the, you know, the possibility of making any mistakes. The order came for 7,325 and you made it three of 700, 235. You know. That kind of errors will not happen because once there is a sales order out there, uh, somebody obviously makes a mistake, entry there, mistake, there is a different story. But once that one document is created, system will make the remaining accounting entries for that business transactions. So in ERP, we will record all business transactions and the accounting transactions more or less are done by uh, the software itself. So you don't need to do spend as much time as what you, you would spend in a manual 
or even in tally kind of situation. In tally also, the accounting guys have to make all business transactions entry manually. They will get some papers. Based on that, they will make entries. But in ERP, they don't need to make those entries because the entries are actually made uh, in an appropriate journal and person. And people can view it and see it and you know maybe approve it if required. But a lot of manual uh, unskilled work, so to say, something which is routine work. Uh, it's taken care by the software. Any questions on this? Now there's some key accounting principles. There are many of them actually. And as I said, this is not accounting class. So I'm not going to discuss a lot of accounting principles. I'm just going to discuss few accounting principles that we must know when you are dealing with ERP software. But uh, but if you are uh, learning accounting, then there are many things that you need to learn. We are not going to get into that details of accounting so much. But there are a few things that you must know. Uh, or rather, there are four principles that you must know. Uh, because that otherwise will not be uh, manage ERP in a way. So that's the reason we need to know. First is entity principle. So we say business firm is regarded as an entity separate from its owner. So what we're going to do, as I said, we're going to tell, discuss a story and we're going to live a story, uh, live a life of a person who owns a business. And many times it may be believed that, you know, there is a company and there is a owner and we cannot mix up between these two. Please note, Company is a legal entity, which is separate than the owner. Okay. And for accounting purpose, particularly, we see uh, the company is a separate entity. Okay. So uh, it's very simple principle in a way, but very important. Because otherwise, that could lead to confusion. That entity, a company is a different entity. The owner is a different person. Okay. That that is what it really means. Let me admit the nature. Uh, the second is going concern principle. So uh, many times, I mean, you know, this company is going to uh, get close. It's not going good and all that, right? Or uh, the market is very tough and the company is going to get shut down. Or sometimes the companies are formed for a specific period. Like, for example, if you are a uh, road construction project, large road construction project, you will see there is a new company formed to just construct the road a road section of the road or a bridge or something or a dam or some large infrastructure project. now what happens uh, uh, this duration of this company say five years it's for special purpose vehicle kind of thing so it's five years or ten years something specific so we know this is the life of this company or as i said there's some companies which may go bankrupt or which may not survive and all that but when the accounting or the, when the financial statements are prepared or accounting is done it doesn't take into account that this is what is going to happen the assumption is being made that this company is going to run forever it's going concert it's going to run forever that is the assumption uh, is the principle that we kind of follow that this is going to remain operational for an indefinitely long period of time now how does it matter uh, it matters because when we see recording, when we see financial statements, many things that we'll do, we'll see. Nobody can tell you, you know, what is in future. So we'll make certain assumptions. Uh, you know, we'll, 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 I'll explain that as we go along. Uh, you may, uh, you know, you, they're saying you're basically predicting, saying, okay, we'll do this for five years, we'll do this for 10 years. We'll do certain assumptions because the basic underlying assumption that we have is that this company is going to run forever. So there are two simple things. Now comes the interesting part. The first is um, an interesting principle. The first is called revenue recognition principle. So many times <coughs> we may believe that when do when does a company make money? So we believe, believe that when company gets money from the customer, that is where company makes money. Okay. Uh, now that's not real. That's not true in real life. So let us take an example of Indictrans. Indictrans got some order. Uh, gets an order, sorry, gets an order uh, of say maybe say 50 lakh rupees or say one crore, let us say one crore 
rupees order that is what interest has got uh, now does it mean that com uh, company has earned revenue of 1 crore no it is not i mean just got out there is a possibility that uh, you know, we could uh, we'll get that kind of revenue so 1 crore revenue is what we are expecting now because we get an order out there now when it trans will uh, develop the software whatever is required a customized erp text for that matter and then it delivers to the customer and then raises invoice saying that boss we are done and obviously it will done in stages but for the sake of simplicity let us uh, take it simple it's saying that no it is going to raise only one invoice of say 1 crore so it raises an invoice on one crore saying this boss we are done pay us 1 crore it raises invoice at that point of time um fintech trans can record revenue in its books of accounts saying that boss we earned 1 crore rupees now uh, has it received the cash the answer is no right answer is no but uh, in accounting books you can actually record it as a uh, revenue so generally they said the revenue is recognized when they are realized or realizable okay so when you know that this is going to happen and are earned usually when goods are transferred or services rendered okay no matter when the cash is received so cash will come after one month two months you know? but revenue is already recorded okay. please note revenue is already recorded recognized uh, even before cash has come to us okay. that is something that we should remember the second principle is called matching principle which says expenses are matched to revenues okay what does it really mean uh, so for example indirect trans takes a uh, decision that it needs to buy let me admit chaitra ali uh so let us say indirect trans decides to buy a large server that's an expense that is planning to incur uh, in a company right so it's a large expense let us say uh, this uh, machine would cost us something like a 10 lakh rupees right now there's an expense uh, which is done in this particular uh, accounting period right we just said that this is the expense that is being done uh, by the company now will it recognize it as an expense in this financial year the answer is no it will do it over a period of time because this expense is being made the revenue against this expense will be made over say 5 years let us say 5 years okay we are making an assumption here that over 5 years revenue will be made against you will be making money against this server for next 5 years after 5 years this will kind of get comped off or kind of disposed of okay. so 5 years we are going to raise make revenues out of it so you really can't book all 10 lakh rupees as an expense in this year's accounting books you will do what to the depreciation so we'll say that this expense will be booked in five parts over the five years not five parts over five years uh, in the books of account okay so that is what is called as a matching principle we say expenses are matched to revenues not vice versa revenues are not matched so we don't record so you make a revenue of say 1 crore you don't match that revenue uh, over 5 years or something like that you don't do that that you do it at once but expenses you can you should rather uh, do it you know match it for the revenues okay so these are two principles may not be very very uh, uh, intuitive this is something is not something you understand intuitively because generally we tend to believe that you get a cash you made a money you give out the cash you made an expense Okay, that is how we will think but what we follow is what is called accrual accounting where you recognize economic events economic events means buy sell you know, or even payment of salary and those kind of things uh regardless of when cash transaction occurs so you recognize revenue even when the cash is not received you recognize an expense even when the cash is already paid out so you pay 10 lakh rupees this year but next year you Uh, record part of it as a expense part of it this year part of his next year and so on when the actual cash has already gone out so regardless of when cash has gone out you would uh, still record uh, your uh, transactions 
and obviously there is a lot of uh, 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 this is not arbitrary you may think it is not arbitrary but this actually gives a better way of doing so, so it is called actual accounting which is what is followed by all companies as against cash accounting which is followed by individuals or very small consulting companies maybe very small services companies they may follow cash accounting but for all practical purposes uh, you know, you, you follow accrual accounting. So that's the kind of uh, the standard. Okay, so accrual accounting. And here, so if somebody says that I made this company made a profit of uh, 20 lakhs, does not mean that they have a cash of 20 lakhs. Okay. Or this company has made loss of uh, 50 lakhs, does not mean that they need cash of 30 lakhs or they have kind of shortage of 30 lakhs. No. Okay. So profit is not equal to cash. That is very important. Okay. So when I was not aware of this, I used to wonder why this Air India keeps on reporting losses, or uh, you know, any many companies that keeps on reporting losses. How are they running for so long? You know, do they have cash to pay? Uh, you know, or uh, a particular company is making a lot of profit. That means, do they have so much cash in their bank or in their you know, uh, in their treasure, treasury? So the answer is no, it's an accounting thing. It's not the same as having a hard cash. So that, uh, it takes some time to kind of absorb this, that when you talk about profit is not cash, so somebody says this company has made 50 lakhs profit, doesn't mean it has 50 lakh rupees of cash. And when it made losses, it doesn't mean that, you know, it doesn't have cash in hand to pay. Right? So please, please note that very carefully, that we are talking about accrual accounting. Well, there's a very specific way of recognizing revenues and expenses, and that is how we'll come to profit. Profit is a good indication of the health of the company, uh, but that is nothing to do actually specifically with the cash. Obviously, they're related, no doubt, uh, and you need both of them, both profit and cash, but it's not equal to cash. Is this clear to you? Do you want me to kind of repeat again, clarify again? Okay, so Archana said it is not clear to her. Is that so, Archana? Okay, so it's clear. And no questions. Okay, fair enough. So now let us talk about depreciation, which is the term that you'll hear again and see that in ear Phoenix. So we'll just quickly look at it. Okay, so Jayant has asked question, does accounting, so does accrual has a relationship with time? Um, I'm not sure what do you mean, but Jayant, I would actually invite you to talk about it. Uh, My so question those, is, yeah. when you say yes. accrual, so does it mean uh, any event which has happened on a particular period of time? So like sales, if I say sales right now, mm -hmm. and I have delivered mm -hmm. a goods, does sales is complete? Okay, uh, it depends on uh, the way it company. Uh, so, if you look at accounting statements, they will mention how they recognize uh, the revenue. So, uh, it could it could be different for different companies. So, for example, if you take a very simplistic example of I'm making chairs and I'm delivering chairs and I have a payment term which says that I will deliver it once. I deliver it and I record the sales and my sales uh, is recognized. But the process is not complete. The process will uh, complete only when I get a cash. So when you talk about sales process, that's not complete. In accounting, we recognized revenue, but the process is uh, not complete. Uh, obviously, if I do a multi-stage invoicing, in a sense, when I'm uh, charging 20%, net 30%, then 50% kind of a thing, obviously, we'll recognize the revenue in parts, but the sales process is not complete till we get cash in hand. So we're just recognizing revenue. Is it okay? We earn it. But a company can't just say, okay, now we earn it and forget about uh, sales because at the end of the day, cash will matter. So cash has to come in. So the process will end only when the cash comes in and it gets recorded 
in in the system that we are receive the cash but this has to be seen is an answer your the, question uh <laughs> no partially because I'm, if i had delivered a goods from my accounting point uh, my transaction is complete recording is complete okay but the sale process <laughs> is complete na no? proceeds are re to be received na no? technically yes, if i if but, i uh, typically at the point of view, <laughs> my sales will be my sales process okay. process will be complete now the amount has to be received or that part is there hmm. pending but as as a sales uh, i think so my uh, i have completed my consideration consideration is agreed everything is done as per hmm. the expectation of the customer so hmm. in that sense my sales is complete if i have to see the sales point uh, of view uh, or no proceeds not really. are outstanding uh not really because what happens is uh, first uh, i mean when you look at order to cash process particularly uh, when we receive the order we executed the order to raise the invoice and we recognize the revenue but that uh, invoice has to you know accepted by the uh, client the client has to uh, make the cash payment so from accounting perspective we can say okay the uh, that particular revenue recognition has happened but from the business process perspective we don't say it's closed because uh, the payment has to be received there could be an issues in terms of quality defects uh, the client may not uh, um, agree to the amount that you raised it may not say it's complete so they may actually send some defective items back we need to take into that account you know uh, uh, maybe uh, make some adjustments accordingly so the process is not complete as far as the process is concerned is not complete till we get the cash so that's why we call order to cash process or even the sales process person. because sales person will need to be involved till it ends now in some for case of fortunate company i would say uh, where uh, you know it's pretty straight forward that i just make a revenue recognition and people are going to pay then it is pretty simple like for example for e-commerce portal people pay actually up front and then the delivery is made there the sales process actually is done pretty simple straight forward Uh, in retail particularly you get payment uh, when things happen happen so there you may say that the sales process is over though there is also possibility of some returns coming in and some complaints being done but there largely we talk about sales being complete but otherwise uh, process point of view and particularly when you are going to look at sales process and at least what the case study we are to, talking about there will try to will actually go till the cash collection and then we say we are done with the sales process or finish from the order to cash process does that uh, answer your question okay okay got it. it's some uh, it's a new uh, view to see at the sales process but uh, this accrual we have to whenever we finalize accrual method of uh, in erp point of view i'm just everything i'm talking from erp point of view so in that case i need to see the business operations in clear lines of actions no? i have to see each step in the business has to be clear for me because if it is in service segment the accrual will be a different method in case of a contract will be a different method of accrual in case of a trading it will be different and in case of manufacturing it will be different so we have to keep observing continuously that's it yes that's my point yes 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 and uh, uh, again there are, i mean we are obviously looking at very uh, what is say simplistic processes in place but i'll also give a sense i mean particularly for those who are new to business but that business is not very simple so uh, it may happen that i mean this is i'm saying this because uh, we may not be able to cover that in hands on hands on will do a very simplistic business process but in real life it could be more complex i mean you raise invoice the customer refuses to pay they don't pay you then you negotiate then you kind of get some payment then how do you handle that so you recognize some revenue and you got kind of a less payment then you kind of adjust accordingly and so on so uh, the reason i'm saying this is we are, i'm making the life very easy look very easy right when we are discussing theory because if you start getting into details of it you know we will never learn anything something specific or something what we need so we are taking very simplistic uh, process and simplistic uh, kind of a best case scenario so to say but in real life there will be very complications but unless we learn the base what we call happy path in it industry right or 
those who are in testing would know this that we talk about happy path means something happens one thing happens second thing happens third thing happens done that's the process that is what we will do uh, in this training program but yes there could be some unhappy ha paths happening which which the system should have been able to handle okay so when you are doing erp next implementation uh, it's not easy simply because it's actually very easy to do the happy path pretty simple we could just go ahead and in a matter of few days you can do happy path uh, implementation that this is how it happens then this happens then this happens but what if customer returns the product so how do we handle that so again there are some things that you should what if uh, customer uh, rejects part of the order um, and you know, then we need to and ask for the refund of that part of the order how do we handle that what if customer says i reject half of the order but you don't pay me money or whether we kind of figured decide that we don't pay the money but we'll give credit to that uh, customer next time when we pay next time when we deliver we will adjust against that this is what happens in real life right then how do we handle that in erp okay that is the configuration so the reason the erp implementation runs for months uh, is not because um, you know it's very complex product uh, it's really because we first do happy path we first do how things should be done in the normal 80% of cases and then we start getting into this 20% of cases what if this happens how will you handle that what if that happens how will you handle that what if you know and in some context something will happen more prominently than others what if we don't get last 10% payment how do we handle that and so on and that will complicate uh, thing but once you get to understand the happy path pretty well understanding this 20% will not take time and that is something which you will never trained on you know formally that is something you learn on job because there are so many things that are happening so you do implementation you figure out how things to be worked on but the 80% of part is what we learn because that is something which is pretty standard and a kind of a normal scenario so that we learn in this particular thing okay any more questions Okay, so depreciation is some. I'm oh, no, sorry, Archana asked question. What is the key difference between matching principle and accrual accounting? Does adjustment into place and role in either case? Uh, so accrual accounting is a type of accounting which we follow. I mean, the other type is cash accounting, which is not followed, uh, at least in companies' cases. We follow by very large, small, individual freelancers maybe, but not really big companies. So we only follow accrual accounting. Accrual accounting um, is based on these two key principles. Revenue recognition principle and matching principle. So these are what we say building blocks for actual accounting. So actual accounting essentially means that you are not recording transaction based on cash times. You are recording transaction uh, based on how you know events, economic events are happening, like purchase, buying, or uh, payroll or tax payment and all that. So actual accounting is uh, is the way of doing accounting. And matching principle and revenue recognition principle are two kind of a key principles that are kind of a building blocks for the uh, for actual account. Uh, does adjustment entry plays in any role? So adjustment entries, I guess you are referring to something to do with trial balance. That is what we'll do. There's nothing to do here actually. Let us uh, keep them separate. This is so if you are referring adjustment entries as the ones which we talked about uh, during say making trial balance. Then there are different things. That is not what we are talking here. Does it answer a question, Archana, or you have something else in mind when you meant uh, when you said adjustment entry? Okay, fair. Enough. So that's good. Thank you, Archana. Okay, so when we said uh, depreciation, so what is happening? Let us understand uh, depreciation in a very simplistic way. As I said, we bought this ten lakh rupees machine. And it is supposedly used for five years, and after five years, we'll dispose it. Okay, I'm taking a very simplistic uh, or normal scenario. So after five years, we'll dispose it off. It's ten lakh rupees is the purchase price, and when we dispose it off, let us assume that we'll get some money out of it when you sell it off. So after five years, we'll get some one lakh rupees kind of thing. Now, uh, how do we really record this as an expense? So as per the matching principle, we can't record that whole expense. In one year, in first year, 
you need to record it in five years okay so uh, so we really need to understand what we call as a depreciable base which is basically cost of assets minus residual value so in this case nine lakh rupees so nine lakh rupees is what we want to depreciate over say five years now five years is what we decide as a useful life of asset now can i take it as a 10 years can i take 20 years the answer is yes or no yes theoretically yes i can but uh, anybody looking at account book account there are there are some norms so if it is a computing uh, machinery kind of a thing is generally three years or five years that is what we take so it should be reasonable whatever you take should be reasonable and should be as per the norms and sometimes there could be enforced per se but typically let us say a computer or server you could take like a five years so that's a useful life and then you can choose the depreciation method either it could be straight line method where the formula is given where you say nine line divided by five and that become annual depreciation that is what you record as a expense so it's an expense actually that you are doing or there is another one which is more prominent called return down value method where uh, it's really complex not so complex but it's basically depreciation rate you kind of decide into back book value at the beginning of the year so you kind of they say you'll depreciate maybe say 10 percent or something or 20 percent or something you would uh, start depreciating so you basically decide the depreciation rate per se and then you kind of start uh, depreciating now uh, people earlier used to use set value line method was easy to calculate you know simple kind of a thing but which is not so much correct also because initially you will be you want to take major portion and then over a period of time your expenses should kind of go down right that particular depreciation amount so, that is happens to return down value okay? initially the depreciation amount is high and it kind of comes down over time. so that is what is done again we are doing software to do that so we really don't worry about calculating it ourselves but we need to choose this method when we are doing it in ERP okay? so this is how we calculate depreciation so let us go back uh, just a minute I think there is a lot of noise here uh, let me close windows and doors I hope this is low now. So this is basically a non-cash expense that allocates a tangible assets cost over its useful life. So the cost that expense that we incurred in year one we're actually spreading out to uh, more than one year. And then we are matching the cost of this with the revenue generated by that uh, asset by spreading such cost over their expected life okay so that is what is the depreciation okay uh, there is obviously uh, it could become very complex in a way in terms of how do you really decide what is the uh, useful life of asset you know what is the right depreciation rate is it 10 percent is it 20 percent what is the right depreciation rate uh, what is the correct residential value because after Five years, we assuming that it will fetch us one crore rupees. How do we? I know that at this point of time, and so on and so forth. So again, that is obviously you need accountants to do think all of that issues for you, and they will choose the right values for you. So you may not really concern so much about it. But yes, there is a lot of work to be done. But on a very high level, depreciation essentially means that you can match your expenses with the revenues, so that your revenue, your expenses are spread over years uh, you know so that you know uh, you kind of say that your cost of your fixed asset is spread over years you know so that the revenues can be generated against it so that's a concept of depreciation for us to understand uh, please let me know if, if you understood it or you have any doubts or questions
Okay, now uh, there are two more things. I mean, we're still talking about the cash timings because that are important. Uh, there is something called accrued expenses and deferred expenses, or we can call some prepaid expenses. So, accrued expenses are expenses recognized before cash is paid out. Okay. Uh, so, for example, if you are working for a company, you get salary uh, at the end of the month. Now, if you really want to go in the book of accounts and try to figure out whether you know what is the cost, employee cost or salary cost at say uh, 20th of this month, you will see that it is kind of recorded that uh, there's a cost of salary cost, two third of whatever you will be getting, the salary that will be getting is already recorded. Why? Because the company is liable to pay the salary at the, I mean, as uh, people are working for it. But the cash is paid out as a norm goes at the end of the month or the, the beginning of next month. Okay. So uh, this is what we call as a accrued expenses. That it is recognized, the cash is not paid out, uh, you know, but you kind of recognize it. Okay, this is what uh, it's accrued. That's called accrued uh, expenses. So this is recognized that, okay, the expense is there, but a cash will be paid. So in a way, when you're working for a company, you're giving some credit to the company, so to say, right? So you're getting paid after you finish maybe a month or so. Or some people, uh, some people get weekly payment, some people get daily payment, right? And in the case of professionals, we get monthly payment. So that's, uh, so cash is paid at the end of the month, but the expense is recognized before that. On the other hand, there are certain uh, expenses which are prepaid. The typical thing is insurance premium. So typically when company takes insurance, uh, it is um, it pays the premium in the beginning of the year and then uh, it kind of consumes that product. So you can't really consume an insurance product without paying upfront. So you have to pay upfront and then you consume. Similarly, if you take some subscription to some journals or some magazines or newspapers for that matter, you first pay upfront and then you receive the service over a bit of time. So here you have paid the cash first and then incur the expenses so that is what is called the deferred expenses so just two things that you should know okay uh, now you get to the financial statements which is i'm sure you kind of should be aware so let me ask you um, which are the financial statements you can type in the chat box uh, if you know what are the financial just name those financial statements So please type it in the chat box. What are the financial statements? I see Andrew is typing in cash flow. That's correct. Fund flow. So fund flow is, uh, I mean, if you really mean by cash flow, that's a financial statement is nothing called a fund flow statement. There's something of the cash flow statement. That's one of the financial statements. Yeah. Any other financial statements that you have heard of? Arjun is saying balance sheet. That's correct. Rutraj, are you aware of any financial statement? Monica, Anil, Ashutosh. Okay, Ratra said no. Okay. Monica also said no. Okay, fair enough. So you might have not heard. Uh, trial balance is not a financial statement. That's kind of a intermediary uh, outcome in the accounting process. Ultimately, you come to what was a balance sheet. Uh, the Rishikesh had incomes or income statement, as Vaishali is saying. Yes, so income statement also called the profit and loss statement. So, profit and loss statement, balance sheet, and third is cash flow statement. So, these are the three statements, uh, which what we call the financial statement. Typically, company would publish uh, uh, the cash, sorry, the balance sheet and the profit and loss statement. These two statements are generally prepared. 
nowadays it is becoming kind of mandatory to publish the third statement which is cash flow statement it is said that if you get any two statements out of these three you can derive a third statement which obviously required good expertise in accounting to do that uh, but typically most of the time you get all three statements for large companies you get all three statements and obviously ERP next produces all three statements so we'll see those uh, statements in ERP next so let us first look at profit and loss statement so uh, this is very again very simplistic uh, kind of a thing which i'm showing so i show note net sales that is the top line so you might have heard this term top line bottom line and i'm sure you hear these terms quite often top line so this is top line this is like a sales the revenue you call it the sales you call it revenue there are the different terms that are used then you deduct what you call as the cost of goods sold whatever uh, suppose if you have bought some so if you are a manufacturing company for example this is typically for a manufacturing company you will have a cost of goods sold so whatever uh, goods that kind of have you sold that is a cost where is 300 let us say for 2009-10 so 500 minus 300 will give us 200 gross profit okay so that is something uh, so gross so there are many types of profit actually so from gross profit you can uh, subtract selling general and admin sgna which is a standard term basically means all the cost which is generic i mean regardless of whether you sell goods or not you kind of incur this kind of a cost so that is let us say 50 rupees here obviously these are crores in crores of rupees so 50 crores actually and then we talk about depreciation right so that is what we are counting here so another term here called amortization so depreciation is for tangible asset like machinery building uh, plants you know these are all we do depreciation but there are intangible assets like patents or goodwill or the brand value and those kind of things so that is where you will uh, call us amortization okay so principle concept is similar in a sense uh, in fixed assets you talk about depreciation in case of intangible assets you call it amortization so let us take that as 50 so you get operating profit which is what is the profit before uh, interest and tax and that is called in our case 30 rupees sorry 50, 100 rupees then you make some interest on the loans that you are taking so that you subtract that is 30 so you get profit before tax pbt something called pbt and then uh, you say we have some taxes and again this is really simplistic but you and you come to the not net profit or profit act after tax which is called pat and that is what is called bottom line and that is in our case is 50 crores okay now there's a top line this is a bottom line okay you start with revenues and start deducting all the expenses and when you deduct the expenses you kind of reach a stage where you get something called as a net profit which is basically nothing but what it was a bottom line so that is what uh, profit and loss statement is it is prepared for a period maybe for a month for a quarter or for a year typically it is published for a year so you could see for this particular year and in india the financial year starts on first april so first april to 31st march that is what uh, we do so that is uh, how you will prepare profit and loss statement. any questions Uh, then comes balance sheet and this is a pretty interesting uh, statement which says there's a balance okay. and this balance is basically an equation which is coming in here which says uh, owns minus owes is equal to net worth okay let us discard this let us look at this second one which makes more sense assets minus liabilities is equal to owner's equity so remember we talked about entity principle right uh, in entity principle, we said that the owner is separate from the company. So owner actually makes some investment. It makes maybe it invests maybe ten lakh rupees in a business, and it has got an equity. In that, let us take that. Now that owner's equity 
it initially started with the investment maybe 10 lakh rupees investment that we put in but over a period of time the company makes profit and or make losses as it as it goes on and it makes profit and losses profit and losses and this is some net profit every year that we have kind of thing so it will it gets accumulated now company owes it to the owner okay so that is what is called owner's equity owner's equity begins with whatever money uh, the owner has put in but over a period of time either it increases hopefully it increases or it could come down it could deteriorate or it could come down uh, if the company is making losses left right right so for so that is what is the owner's equity so that is equal to assets that company builds minus liabilities uh, whatever companies owe to other say bank for interest payment or to government for taxes or to employees for its salaries and all that right so that is the liabilities and the assets assets we fix assets like property plant equipment or investment and so on. now this is the standard thing which is says assets is equal to liabilities plus owners equity again people would say assets is equal to liabilities because what is owner it is also an external party right it is as good as the government or employees or uh, vendor or you know um, or a supplier kind of a thing so it's it's basically uh, an external party so you can say assets is equal to liabilities where assets is what uh, the company owns and liabilities is what company owe or supposed to pay to this guys that is what so it could include even owners you don't need to separate out the owners okay now uh, the challenge the using this terminology of assets is equal to liabilities is that when we look at it we start feeling assets are good because we own them liabilities are bad because we owe them right we are not supposed to have liabilities so many times we get an impression that are uh, we should have more assets and less liabilities okay? that is not even we are taught in common english in normal english we say asset is something that we should have as many as possible and liabilities we should have as minimum as possible so that is what we are typically taught that's how the the terminology uh, is used and hence when we look at initially at this financial statements we get pretty confused because here it says assets is equal to liabilities that kind of gets confusing so nowadays people use a different terminology this which makes more sense so there we say application of funds is equal to sources of fund application of fund is equal to sources of fund that is the equation that we put so on one side we put application of funds and the other side is the sources of fund i'm admitting yogesh soman shi so on one side we say application of fund and other side we say sources of fund so we are getting funds from these sources and we are applying it in other side what about the assets that we are building okay so that is what the application of funds is equal to sources of fund which is a easier thing to understand than saying assets and liabilities simply because we got some notion of asset and some notion of liability it's easier to work with um, sources of fund and application of funds okay so let me know uh, i'm just a quick quick query quick quiz when we say sources of fund when we say sources of fund what are we referring to are we referring to liabilities assets or owners equity there are three choices when we say sources of fund what are we referring to assets liabilities or owners equity please mention your answer uh, in the chat box when we say sources of fund what do we really mean please put your answer in the chat box if question is not clear please ask me to repeat uh, if you understood the question please answer in the chat box okay so rishikesh said assets ashish said assets and a question mark okay i'm talking about sources of fund so i got uh, three answers by now all saying assets okay let me wait for few more answers i'm asking what is sources of funds
yes there are 27 participants okay and uh, that is not a choice given banks is not a choice given i am only referring to assets liabilities and owner security so uh, banks is not, not part of it so you have, you have only three choices one of this so what is sources of funds yeah there are 27 participants in this training program i got only four okay i'm choosing assets then i'm just saying both assets and liabilities owner's equity with a question mark by archana what is saying assets and liabilities yes i want some more answers Snail is saying owner security. Jitendra, Nupur, Rahul, Sumit. What do you think? You have to give a guess. I mean, I mean, you, whatever you understand. Assets and liabilities. What Swati said. Is okay. No saying assets and liabilities. Rahul saying asset sales. Kipindri saying assets. Okay. Uh, okay. So the answer is actually liabilities. Uh, the sources of funds are actually liabilities, but the liability includes uh, owner's equity. So. If I refer uh, to this uh, thing, and we say asset is equal to liabilities. Okay, so let me. But assets create the source of income. No? Just liabilities cannot be a source of managing the assets. If you do not have assets, uh, in any <clears throat> sort of any sort of whether it's human assets or whatever sort of assets, how <clears throat> the uh, surplus is going to be generated? Okay. Okay. Man who's saying? I mean, I'm just not able to. Jain. Time who's speaking? Okay. You're. Okay. Now I can see you are speaking. Okay. Uh, sorry. Um, I, I missed your question. Uh, can you please repeat again? So my question is: You're saying uh, liabilities are creating mm -hmm. the sources of fund. Okay. That is not mm -hmm. liabilities are accumulation of the uh, surpluses basically. Assets create their assets. Mm -hmm. Asset is a source of fund. Asset is a source of earning. Without asset, you can't earn anything. Okay. If I don't have a single penny of rupee. Okay, that's a good argument. If I don't have a single machine. Mm -hmm. if, I, if I don't have a, uh, laptops and PCs and people are sitting there, I can't just create a software. I can't just make money. So for making money or creating assets, I need to have something in mm. hand, whether it's a monetary asset, non-monetary asset, intellectual asset, some sort of asset is required. Liabilities cannot create a source of fund. Hmm. Okay, that's good. Uh, any other uh, comment on this? Very interesting observation. Yes, any other comment? Uh, okay, Taranji is saying uh, revaluation of assets are also source of income. Very good, which is, I think, uh, okay, that's, that's a good point. Anything else? So I'm saying that uh, majority of you, rather all of you actually are saying assets, but I'm kind of saying something which is exactly opposite of what you're being saying. So um, am I making mistakes? Or, um, Looks like I'm making a mistake. Or is there anybody who thinks uh, sources of funds are equal to liabilities? I think Jen made a very good argument. So 
do you agree with him or do you think that you no know, the liabilities means uh, sources of fund and please unmute i mean i think it's a time for discussion rather than uh, only using chat box so i just want you to think through and tell me whether uh, what we should call as application of fund and what we should call as a uh, source of yes anyone Yes, somebody is speaking. Okay, I'm just getting to your point. Unless uh, we don't put a capital <clears throat> to the business, the resource uh, there will not be any income which will be arising because <clears throat> anything starts with some right. in basic foundation. I can buy an asset, or I can have in people or team. Unless there is an investment, and unless there is an investment, which is which is a cap owner's equity, as per the, this simple line, owner's equity, hmm. which is also a liability, basically. Hmm. So yes. If that is not there. Yes. The asset cannot be created. Hmm. Unless, yeah. So that's an uh, that's an uh, what you can say, merry-go-round continuous. So hmm. asset is creating income, income is adding owner's equity, equity is adding assets. It's going on cycle. and that's creating more and more right. surpluses we see okay okay yes so uh, i guess there is some still confusion and i'm uh, not really hearing anyone else uh, in the room uh, do i still see assets is being seen as a source of fund so let me just pipe in whatever you are let us say that this is source of fund people uh, saying assets um uh, and uh, application of funds as is equal to uh, so we want to say source of fund is equal to application of funds and uh, okay let's check your inbox uh, is this what all of you kind of agree or uh, you say otherwise so if you agree you say yes if you don't agree you say no is this correct you say yes if you think this is correct uh, say no if you say it is not correct so i want everyone to kind of whatever you understood so far i am not saying that you understood it fully you are just scratching the surface but whatever understanding that uh, you are developing uh, let us see whether uh, you kind of agree so jayanti is saying no so jayanti is saying it is not correct sources of fund okay so jayant you are saying other way around i'm just re uh, framing my statement because as you discuss as i said initially that sources of the fund is going to be assets but from income point of view mm -hmm. for buying an asset i need a money mm -hmm. which i will uh, have it from my own capital So I'm reframing hmm. the statement again. That's it. Okay. Uh, could Ashish Shah is saying liability is amount of money owed, so it is source of fund, is it? Okay. So there's question mark here. Sources of fund is equal to assets. So Radhika is agreeing on that. Uh, very nice. Good. So uh, even before we. to decide what is right or wrong let us first get inputs because i want everyone to start thinking now because i think for last one hour 20 minutes or 15 minutes i am speaking everyone is listening so i want all of you start thinking now uh, what is what could be assets and what could be liabilities or let me do one thing i mean since we are kind of running out of time i will show you what is there in assets and what is there in liabilities okay and then we'll come back to this and we'll see whether Uh, assets should be called as sources of fund, or liability should be called as sources of fund. Okay. So let us understand assets and liability a little more, and then we'll come back to this. And please, please have some patience. And uh, by now, I think you realize that I'm not really uh, giving you ready answers. Uh, I want you to think hard. Um, and I see that there's little confusion. Is not sure about it. You know. 
So let me instead of giving the answers out of it, let me explain what is assets, what is liabilities, okay, and then let us come back to this question whether what is source of fund or application of fund. So let us it should be either get more clear or maybe more confusing. I don't know <laughs> what will happen, but let us see assets. So when you say assets, and let me actually use one slide which is it's easy for us to uh, okay let me this become slow mm. what do you see on the slide okay do you see a kind of a tree okay I think yes, I should answers. okay 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 so let me go back to this because it is very small so let me go back to you okay so when you say assets, there are two types of assets, current assets and uh, we say long term assets, so to say, okay, fixed assets essentially. So current assets are uh, basically cash, cash equivalents, that is basically you put money in the uh, uh, in the account, so that is what is called cash equivalent, uh, in the bank account, it is as good as a cash, so that is your asset. Account receivable. It is something which is money which is about to come from the customer. So we already talked about it, right? We raise an invoice and we are waiting for money to come. So that money has not come, but it is expected to, so it is not cash, but it is expected to be received very soon. So we will call it account received. So that is something which is coming, money we are expecting to come. Less allowance for bad debt. So if you believe that. Uh, uh, though we are expecting 100 crores to come, maybe only 90 crores will come. Remaining will go away, will not really happen. So that we put allowance, maybe a 10 crore over there. Then all the inventory that we have. So for example, if I'm making chairs, uh, then I have all these uh, food that I have, then all these uh, um, raw material, like some metal I will need, right, to make those chairs kind of a thing or to make furniture. So all the raw material I have, so I have some inventory of the raw material that I may be making some artifacts of it. It's no longer a wood, but it is cut wood, you know, cut in pieces. That is the working process. And then finished goods, which is basically or chairs or tables or desk, you know, all that. This is all my inventory that I have, which is also an asset for me. Then all prepaid expenses, like I already paid for insurance, I already paid for some subscription and all that. That is all is already paid out, so that is also an asset for me. Then I have a long term assets, which is uh, basically property, plant, equipment. So I have buildings, I have machineries, I have a land, right? That's the kind of a fixed assets that I have, which is let us, if I record the purchase price, then I will deduct depreciation and I will say current price. So, for example, uh, the machinery of 10 lakhs. But at any point of time, I'm looking at it, maybe two years from now, maybe out of uh, 10 lakh, I will record as a 10 lakh. And as a depreciation, maybe uh, 4 lakhs. So it has come down to 6 lakhs. So that is the net value of that asset. Person. Then investment that I made in other companies or in mutual fund or in some equity, that is something will come here. And then intangible assets like goodwill, you know, the intellectual property. Uh, the patterns that you have, you know, copyrights that you have, all that is a long term assets. So, this is one side. Each side may have short term uh, assets, current assets, and fixed assets. Another side, your liabilities, which is short term liabilities like you need to pay uh, loans. Uh, so, if you have one year loan, whatever you need to pay within a year, that is liability. Short term loans, accounts payable, you have to pay to suppliers, to the vendors, that is a liability that you have. Accurate expenses, then provision for tax that you need to pay to the government, employee benefits, the salary that you need to pay, dividend that you need to pay, and so on. And then long term liabilities like long term loans are there, there could be some deferred taxes that you need to pay, pension you need to pay at some point of time. Right? So it's a long term kind of a liabilities. Then you have um, uh, it has become very slow for me. Okay, yeah. Then you have owner's equity, as we say, share capital to begin with. Okay. And then retain earnings over a period of time, whatever you have kind of or that is kind of coming in there. So that is what is the owner's equity per se. 
okay so this is what we talk about uh, uh that's what we talked about assets and liabilities so let us talk about owner's equity as part of liabilities so we have only two choices now. assets are the one which are short uh, current assets and long term assets and we have liabilities which includes you know, what you need to pay to government to employees to vendors to banks and to owners so let us keep it simple two choices assets and liabilities uh, assets we understood liabilities we understood okay now tell me what is what what is source of fund and what is application of fund okay uh, we'll extend this session by 5 minutes just to clarify this doubt it will be a good time to exit at this point of time so let me again repeat i'm talking about assets where uh, assets uh, with all current assets fixed assets and i am talking about uh liabilities uh, which is all what we need to pay what we owe essentially and then what will call as a so application of fund should i call application of fund assets as my application of funds or should i say liabilities as i said to the question again carefully what should i call as my application of funds should i call assets as my application of fund or should i call liabilities as my application of funds <coughs> yes uh, i you need to again repeat uh, your answers or Maybe need to change the answer because the question is changed now. I'm saying application of funds. So, so Danaji is saying asset is application of fund. Okay, that is one answer that we got. Liability is the source of fund. Okay, and then Arjun is saying application funds is uh, liabilities. Okay, let us not use the word equal to sign because that could be confusing. Because we're saying assets is equal to liabilities, so that could be confusing. So let us say that asset is application of fund or liability is application of fund. Is it asset or is it liability? And I want all of you to answer. So, uh, Ruturaj, yes, I would expect to answer. Abhijit, Rahul, Radhika, Saili. Nupur, Sumit, please. I want every one of you to answer this. Okay, so which are saying liabilities? Nupur saying liabilities. Yes. What about others? I want everyone to kind of answer. So this is a liability source of fund, and assets are application of funds. Okay, so liability is source of fund. Uh, Rahul is saying source of funds is equal to liabilities. Okay, so there is a there is no uh, consensus. Or Dr. Raj is saying liabilities is application of funds. Okay, so. Uh, what will do and i know it's not a good time a good way to conclude the session but uh, let us conclude the session with this kind of confusion in some of your mind i think some of you might have clarity but uh, let us have uh, conclude the session with this kind of confusion so when you come next time uh, we'll actually start with uh, erp next we'll not really show you slides i'll start with erp next and i'll start Showing you chart of accounts and this kind of a thing. But the first is that uh, I'll be sharing these slides. Um, I guess there is a um, Telegram group form, not WhatsApp group. A Telegram group is form. So I'll be sharing these slides in uh, that group. Okay. I want you to go through it carefully, and I want you to uh, think, find the answer for. It. And you may even post it in the Telegram group, okay? So because we have two days to go, so you may post it in the Telegram group also. I want you to really think through it, uh, and uh, 
come with their own answer in the next session okay so i want you to uh, go through the slides carefully i want you to think through these answers maybe you refer to web you can google about it you can read about it but just don't take the answer for the sake of the answer right i want you to think through uh, you know to this because it's important to understand it rather than because we are not even going to give exam right at the end of the course saying that okay sources of fund two choices assets liability or sources of funds are uh, assets and then true or false we are not going to do that uh yes so snehal that's correct so i want you to uh, search a little bit google a little bit uh, think about it and then come up your own answer next time so i am not giving you the answer uh, i am asking you to read through i am asking you to uh, explore a little bit and then come up with the answer okay um, and i know this is very unusual because uh, that's not what teachers typically do they give out the answers but i'm not giving you the answer i'm asking you uh, to explore more and come with your answer next time but obviously in next session we'll clarify it i don't want to keep it as a suspense throughout the training uh, program we can't move ahead without it so uh, please read through please explore um, and come with your answer in next session uh, as i said uh, i think guptesh already posted that Link because I didn't see all of you in the group, so I didn't able to post slides. So um, I'll also post some questions on the group. So again, I would expect some of you or all of you actually to kind of uh, get some answers to that uh, questions. So please watch the group regularly. Though we don't have session tomorrow, I want you to spend some time on uh, next uh, session on Friday, 9:30. Uh, so our session is over. I will stop recording. But uh, if you have any questions on anything which you couldn't ask in between, uh, you can stay back and answer. Uh, ask and I'll answer the questions. But if you feel that you are kind of done now today, enough is one and a half, more than one and a half hours, then you can take an exit. Okay. So the session is concluded, but I'm waiting uh, for any one of you who would have some questions to ask. So I have stopped recording, and let me conclude the session. Stay back only if you have any questions; otherwise, you can take an exit. Thank you. See you again on Friday.